New tonight, developments in the ongoing drama revolving around JEA and the strained relationship between the Jacksonville City Council and the mayor's office. The special meeting called by Mayor Lenny Curry last night is now being described by one council member as a, quote, disaster. And this all comes on the heels of security issues with his chief of staff and now calls for resignation. Our Shelby Danielson joins us now to break down the latest details. Shelby. Well, Janie and Anthony, we just learned from Councilman Garrett Dennis that he has instructed General Counsel to draft a resolution asking JEA Board Chair Alan Howard to resign. Now, Garrett says he wants to meet with Howard to discuss it in person first before he officially files that legislation. We also just learned that the Office of General Counsel cleared the mayor's chief of staff following that complaint we told you about earlier this week. Intention remains now between the city's top two officials, and it was made very clear at last night's meeting. Today, I spoke with both of them about what happened. I think the mayor would also like to add his thanks um, to uh, everyone for uh, joining us today. Oh, I, no, I'm not recognizing the mayor. I'm not recognizing the mayor. In the special meeting oh, yeah. called by Mayor Curry against the council president's wishes, he was denied a chance to speak at the podium as board members presented their findings for a possible sale of JEA. Shortly after, Mayor Curry called the media out for an interview, just as it was Brochet's turn to talk. I called that meeting today because the council president refused to call that meeting. Uh, so is that why you're calling us out here now nope. while she's responding? The two haven't talked since. Respect is a two-way street, and so I thought it was disrespectful to call the meeting when I had indicated that I didn't think it was wise to do so. Roche stands by her actions and says the emotional meeting proved it was a premature move. Uh, that's not, that, that that's not my question. Because our number one concern is the ratepayer and our employees. When you have public policy discussions, uh, sometimes they get intense and uh, different people and different personalities handle the, that in different ways. As for the latest disciplinary action against the mayor's chief of staff, Brian Hughes, following a complaint for aggressive behavior, Curry says he's letting the review process unfold. On Wednesday, Broche says she had Hughes' security badge deactivated for city council to ensure a safe work environment. On Thursday, Mayor Curry's office revoked that action, saying only his chief administrative officer, Sam Musa, had that ability. I have delegated the authority to him to access to public buildings, and uh, he made that decision this morning, and I stand by his decision. As for what's next for JEA. I don't think it's going to go away. I think that the council needs to do its due diligence and really be in front of this. I have some questions. I've got to go through the report, digest it with my team. The main players in the fight have yet to plan for a follow-up meeting altogether, but council members Garrett and Crescent are meeting next week to draft legislation to involve the public if a vote were to take place. Now, the mayor's chief of staff, Brian Hughes, just released a statement following his clearance from that complaint. He says in part, quote, with the distraction behind me, I'm proudly working with the mayor and city leaders to accomplish positive results for the people of this great city. Now, that complaint is still being filed separately from the city with the EEOC at the state level. We'll continue to follow that in the Information Center. Shelby Danielson, First Coast News on your side.